Time once again for a five minute ish review. They Crawl Beneath is directed by Dale Faberger and stars Joseph Almani, Carly Eldridge, and Michael Pere. Danny is a cop in a southwestern town. A recent incident that left him wounded has put a strain on his relationship with his girlfriend, Gwen. Retreating from the troubles of job and life, he spends time with his uncle, drinking beer and working on an old Mustang at an out-of-the-way ranch. A series of earthquakes has been shaking the town up. A large tremor causes the car to topple from the jack stands and it pins Danny and kills his uncle. Trapped, Danny thinks he is royally screwed, but he has no idea how much danger he's really in. The earthquakes have released a previously undiscovered species of giant carnivorous worms. Now Danny has to not only survive, but fight for his life from these poisonous and hungry creatures. What pulled me into this movie was the boast that it was using practical effects. In an era rife with computer-generated creatures of all sizes, I was eager to see how they did in bringing these monstrous nematodes to life. I was not disappointed on that front. The effects are really good, and they take you back to that fun time in the 80s when your VHS horror selection was filled with slimy rubber creepy crawlies. I'm gonna think 1982's Parasite with Demi Moore. The worms here are generally puppets, worked off screen by wire or maybe by a well-hidden hand. And there might be the odd wiggle across the floor by a string too. They are appropriately slimy and have a mouthful of teeth that you would not want to mess with. They have a little bit of a scaled down trimmer's graboid look about them as far as their toothy grins. This film departs from the usual theme of run, it's the monsters, by having Danny trapped under the car. Even if he escapes from beneath his automotive prison, the quake has effectively sealed the old door with broken tension springs shut. His cell phone battery is dead, and already having been bitten, he has to fight the deadly hallucinogenic toxin before his time runs out. There's little hope for help from the outside. Danny having to face the unimaginable alone is another departure from the genre norm. This actually allows the character to develop more than I think he would be in a typical everybody-run scenario. Any character development in those situations always comes across as forced, in my opinion. There's a life-threatening something after you, so let's sit down and talk to discuss our feelings. It just doesn't work for me. Being alone and trapped within a confined space and suffering from toxin-induced hallucinations lets Danny work through some demons while he fights literal monsters. I do have some quibbles with the film. It relies pretty heavily on us forgetting the mundane. There's a moment that Danny attempts to dial 911 with the last seconds of his phone's battery, and he gets a recording that all circuits are busy. It is an emergency. A major earthquake has occurred. That makes some sense. It is when he procures the now-deceased uncle's phone that it breaks down for him. He makes several attempts to unlock the phone so he can make a call. Everyone knows that you can make emergency calls with a locked phone. Now, maybe getting the recording previously was supposed to excuse this, but I think under the situation, I'd keep hitting that red emergency button in the hopes that a call might go through. Danny doesn't even try. He gives up using the phone to call anyone. There's a timeline issue that is unexplained as well. A small but still oversized worm is found and, thinking it is dead, taken to a lab by Gwen. Her scientist friend discovers some time later that the toxin is deadly, and if anyone is stung or bitten, they'd only have about two hours. Well, Danny's uncle was stung in what appeared to be the morning, and the scientist is making the call to Gwen as co-workers are heading out the door at the end of the day. That scientist also discovers that the worm wasn't dead and that it shed its skin, but for some reason never looked for the larger worm that had obviously escaped into her lab, an oversight that she makes at her own peril. So some issues, some glaring scratch-your-head moments, if I'm honest, but overall, I really did enjoy the film. Is it going to change the face of cinema as you know it? No, but it will pass 88 minutes, and if you're like me, satisfy your need for some decent, slimy, and toothy, creepy crawlies. They Crawl Beneath will be released digitally and on DVD and Blu-ray October 4th from WellGo Entertainment. So check it out and let me know what you thought of it. Follow the link in the notes to any of the social media outlets or send an email to timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com. 